How you doing, I'm Matt. Today I want to talk to you about the five essential router bits I think every beginner woodworker needs to have in their toolbox. A router is one of those tools that is an essential woodworking tool once you get started in your woodworking journey. You use it so much and it is such a versatile tool. It's probably one of the most versatile tools you can buy. Before we get into those router bits, I want to talk to you a little bit about router basics because if you don't know about router bits that you need, I think you probably want to know some information about the router you need, right? So these are your basic two different kinds of routers you're gonna be choosing from if you're buying a router for the first time. A palm router, or also called a trim router. And then also a plunge router. This can also be a fixed base router. This router actually comes with two bases, so you get the best of both worlds, a fixed base and a plunge base. So just because a router is fixed base doesn't mean you can't adjust the depths. You can adjust the depths on both of these. It just depends on, a plunge router means you can plunge it into the work material and then move where a fixed base, it's not gonna let you do that. It's at a fixed depth, whatever depth you set it. You don't wanna adjust that while the router is on, whereas a plunge base, it's spinning, it's on, you plunge it into the material, then you can move it. This is a trim router. It's excellent for doing just that, trimming the edges of things like tabletops with the profile bits that we're gonna talk about. But if you want to cut dados and do more strenuous work, you're gonna to want to step up to a bigger router because I've tried to cut dados with this and while I was able to kind of force my way through it, it didn't like it at all. It would quit halfway through the cut, different things like that. It's just not made for that type of work. I picked this one because Jonathan Cass Moses recommends this one and uh, I trust his opinion. So this is one I went with. I'll drop a link in the description below to both of these routers, but this is the one if I'm only choosing one, if I only can have one in the shop, this will do everything that this will do and more because this is a more powerful router. And the great thing about this router is it can do both quarter and half inch collets, which means you can use both quarter and half inch bits. The shank on them are half inch thick or quarter inch thick, which is great, it gives you a lot of options. Both of these routers are variable speed. As you can see, you can make them go faster, make them go slower. You want that in a router. So both these routers come with an edge guide. I would highly recommend getting a router with an edge guide. It makes your life much easier. You can insert the, the edge guide into the router, and then that way you can route a certain groove or whatever from the edge of the works. A couple of really quick safety tips. If you're using a router, there's a direction you have to make it go or it's not gonna work right. When the router's between you and the workpiece, you wanna move it from left to right. That's because the way the blade is spinning or the bit is spinning, if you move it the other way, it'll basically crawl down the wood because that's the way that blade is or the bit is spinning. When you go the opposite direction of the blade spin, you're actually cutting into the wood, which is what you want. I accidentally go the wrong way sometimes and you'll feel it kind of move on you. You don't want that, go the other way. If you're gonna go all the way around, if we're doing a round over all the way around the top, left to right, and then up here, you're gonna go back to the left because if you go this direction up here, it's just gonna walk you down the board. One thing I did early on was buy some very cheap router bits because I was broke and I was trying to save some money. So I actually bought some, like a three set of something off of Amazon, it's very cheap. They don't cut well. They leave a rough edge, they burn the wood. They're just, they're not worth your money. It's better just to go ahead and spend the $20 for the one bit versus the $20 for the three bits because you're gonna come out further ahead because you're not gonna be ruining your wood. I have links in the description below to both Whiteside and CMT for you to check out. If you buy them on taytools.com, you can use code 731CMT10, save you 10% off of those. The first bit we're gonna talk about are roundover bits. Roundover bits come in various sizes from 1 8 all the way up to a lot. This one's a 3 8, this is a 1 8. I'm gonna show you how to do those first. The second bit we're gonna do is a chamfer bit. I think the roundover and the chamfer are the staples of woodworking. If you need a roundover, you need a chamfer, and then the next three, you're gonna to wanna to get, but these are the two you're gonna want first. Chamfer bits come in all shapes and sizes as far as the angle they cut and how far they cut, how long of an angle they cut. Uh, this is a good happy medium. I'll put links in the description below the ones I like. If you're wanting to just take the sharp edge off of something like a cutting board or, or a tray or a tabletop, then the 1 8 inch is excellent for that. If you want to make a more round edge, then this 3 8 inch roundover bit will really give you a nice big round over. This is a square piece of wood. It has really sharp edges on it. As you can see, it just put a 
very small, rounded over edge. That gives it a nice smooth edge. It gives it a finished feel. If you're building furniture and things like that and you leave that sharp edge, it's gonna cut people or it's gonna splinter on you later. This is a good way just to finish that up. Now let me show you the 3 8 inch round over versus the 1 8. Now you see the difference on the 1 8 versus the 3 8. There's a, quite a big difference there. It just depends on the look you're going for. And let me show you what else a roundover bit can do. So if you have a roundover bit and you want to create something that doesn't look like a roundover, all you have to do is raise the bit. See that profile, how it's coming through there? Let me show you what that looks like. So that just gives you another use for the roundover bits. You can round it over, but you can also put that profile or that detail into the edge of a tabletop. And it kind of looks really cool, not kind of, it looks really cool. I put the fixed base on this DeWalt router just to show you it can raise and lower the same. It's actually, it raises and lowers easier than this one. We've got a 45 degree chamfer bit on there. They can, you can get them in different degrees, but 45 degree is kind of the most common. A lot of people who are fans of chamfer bits are not fans of roundover bits. They say the 80s called and they want their edge profile back. So it's kind of a more traditional, more modern look. So you won't actually notice a whole lot of power difference on the edges when you're rounding over or chamfering the wood. Where you'll notice the power difference in these two is when you're cutting grooves into wood. Nice clean chamfered edge. You can tell the difference down here to where that roundover was where I used that kind of the profile on it. That's a chamfered edge. That's going to give you a more modern look on your finished edge. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. We also have merchandise and physical products available for you to check out also. Number three, straight bits. Straight bits are another essential, which is why we got five essentials, right? These things are awesome for cutting dados and grooves in wood, such as when I put tabletops on, I use a 1 8 inch straight bit to be able to cut the groove for these tabletop fasteners. This is the bit you need for that. It just works great. Also, this big old fat three quarter inch bit, this thing will cut a groove in wood like nobody's business. This is how I install T-Tracks, using a three quarter inch straight bit on a plunge router. Now you can set it to three eighths inch deep. It's three quarter inches wide. That's how big 99% of your T-Tracks gonna be. You're gonna route that in there, and this is what you need for that type of work. Number four on the list, flush trim bits. These things are super handy to have in the shop and you're gonna want some at some point in time. Now, why would you want a flush trim bit? A couple of reasons. If you lay a veneer or something on top of another piece, you can take the flush trim bit, similar to what we're gonna do here on this example, and make sure everything is flush. Now, there's three different kinds of flush trim bits. One has a bearing on the bottom. In other words, it's gonna be hanging out of the router like that. This one, like we're gonna be cutting with, has the bearing on top, and I don't have one, but there are that have bearings on top and bottom. The reason you'd want a bearing on the top is if similar to this application, you want it to follow along this piece on top and cut the piece on bottom. The one that has the bearing on the bottom, obviously it'll follow whatever is underneath. So it just helps keep everything flush. All right, you see here, I've got this piece of quarter inch plywood laminated to this piece of pine. We're gonna trim that so that it matches the pine. The bearing's gonna roll along the edge of this pine and it's gonna trim the plywood. Well, that's the game plan. See where the bearing's making contact now with the pine and now the actual bit will cut the plywood. As you can see, this is perfectly flush now with that pine that it's laminated to. That's a flush trim bit. It makes things flush. Last but certainly not least is the dovetail bit. And that's probably gonna shock a lot of people if you know about routers and bits and things like that because not a lot of people is gonna consider this essential, but I do. Let me tell you why. This dovetail bit will allow you to create tons of jigs like I have on the channel. I've created this crosscut sled with the adjustable fence using a dovetail bit. I created this jointing slash tapering jig using the dovetail bit. Also, I was able to create, uh, thanks to Mike Taylor and his design, this mini workbench using the dovetail bit. This dovetail bit is so handy, you'll be able to create a ton of stuff using it, and that's why I love it so much. Hey, if you like this project, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to my router table build. You're gonna like seeing how a router table is built and why you need one. Also, another one of my favorite videos right there. If you click one of those two boxes, you get a big old virtual fist bump. Thank you for watching.